Good afternoon. As the president of the Cassidy chapter of the Cum Laude Society, I welcome all of you to the 2021 annual chapter meeting. I would like to ask Father Tim Sean Newmans of St. Edward's Chapel to give the invocation. Thank you. I invite you to please stand. And on this special day, special day, let us pray together. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Oh God, who is like you? Who is holy and loving like you? You are the source of every blessing. And today we ask for your presence this morning as we honor our friends. Our friends who have excelled. God, we celebrate their dedication. You have given to them such a great capacity for creativity and critical thinking and for focused effort. You, O oh Creator, have filled them with your spirit and wisdom. Their spark urges all of us to excellence. So shape us and form us one step closer to you. Who is like you, O oh God? Who is holy and loving like you? It is in your holy name, the precious name of Jesus, that we pray. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the friendship of the Holy Spirit be with all of us today and always. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. We are gathered here today in St. Edward's Chapel. Some are watching on live stream in the classrooms and some family members watching somewhere else for the induction of 23 outstanding students to the Cum Laude Society. We will formally induct seven seniors who did not have their induction ceremony last spring 2020 because of the pandemic. For the school year 2020 and 2021, we will induct eight seniors and eight juniors. I welcome the parents of the inductees to Cassidy School. We are happy that you are here with us to celebrate the induction of your children. I would also like to welcome our speaker today, Captain Caitlin Anderson, who is a Cum Laude Society member herself and graduated from Cassidy School in 2020, 2011. She was in my accelerated chemistry class, which is now the honors chemistry class, during her sophomore year, and in my AP biology class during, my se during her senior year here at Cassidy. I would also like to acknowledge the presence of the chairman of the board of trustees of Cassidy School, Mrs. Janae Lister. It is our honor to have you all here today with us. I would, also, I would like to ask Mr. David Gorham, Associate Head of School of Cassidy School, to talk to us about the Cum Laude Society. Thank you, Ms. Ezeger. <clears throat> Some of you have heard about the Cum Laude Society every year during our annual chapter meeting. But for some, like our freshmen, class, students new to Cassidy, new teachers, and the parents, this may be the first time to hear a brief summary about the society. The Cum Laude Society is an international academic society with 382 chapters at a number of public and larger private schools, and a larger number of private schools here in the United States, as well as in Canada, England, France, the Philippines, Puerto Rico, and Spain. There are 19 ISAS schools who have a chapter. The Society was founded in Maryland in 1906 for the purpose of recognizing scholastic achievement in secondary schools. The Latin term cum laude means with praise. The Society's motto is three Greek words, arete, excellence, DK, justice, and TME, honor. Arate includes the concept of excellence in the moral sense and is not limited to the ideal of superiority and scholarship, 
nor does it involve the endeavor of competing primarily for academic goals. DK includes the concept of what is suitable and appropriate as well as just. TMA includes the concept of dignity and truth as well as honor. The Cassidy School chapter of the Cum Laude Society was started in 1961. At Cassidy, the upper division teachers, administrators, and current student members of the society nominate, nominate candidates for induction. Election to the society is limited in a given academic year to no more than 10% of the junior class and 20% of the senior class. The Cassidy Selection Committee meets and deliberates about the nominees to determine the final list of inductees. The prime criteria, criteria for selection to the Cum Laude Society include the number and enthusiasm of nominations, a demonstration of excellence in academic work, a willingness to take academic risks, a demonstrated sense of collegiality, a love of learning, and good character, honor, and integrity in all aspects of school life, which are in line with the society's, the society's motto of excellence, justice, and honor. The students elected to Cum Laude Society have distinguished themselves by the rigor of their curriculum and by their enthusiasm for learning. Ms. Edgar. Thank you, Mr. Gore. At this time, I would like to acknowledge the current members of the Cassidy Cum Laude Selection Committee who are here with me in the altar area of the chapel. Head of School, Mr. Nathan Sheldon. Associate Head of School and Latin Teacher, Mr. David Gorham. Upper Division Director and English Teacher, Dr. John Powell. Academic Dean and Spanish Teacher, Ms. Joanne Infantino. Mr. Chris Halpern of the Math Department. Dr. Janet Hubble of the College Counseling Office and the English Department. Dr. Bonnie Gerard of the English Department. Dr. Emily Wardrop of the History Department. And myself of the Science Department. We are joined by another member of the Cum Laude Society, Dr. Will Bishop, who was inducted to the Pi Beta Kappa of Emory University. Before we proceed with the induction of the new members, let me tell you more about the students who will be inducted to the society today. They are intellectually brilliant people. They love to learn and they are also courageous who are not afraid of the challenges provided by the rigorous classes like advanced placement or honors classes. They have opted to take the difficult classes to learn more even if these classes may lower their GPA. They keep up with the lessons and requirements of their classes and excel in them despite the challenges. They take the responsibility of their own education. They come in for extra help early in the morning and or during their free periods. They go beyond what is expected of students in their classes by reading more, analyzing, finding answers to challenging questions. They are not afraid to ask questions or to make mistakes because they know that these are part of the learning process. They respect their peers and their teachers. They help their classmates even when they are busy with their own homework. They suggest and participate in interesting discussions. They do not only excel in their academics, but they are also good athletes, stage performers, artists, musicians, debaters, and leaders. They go through their lives inside and outside of the Cassidy campus with excellence, good character, honor, and integrity. We are indeed fortunate to have such fine students as members of the Cassidy community. Inductees, the distinguished record you have made for yourself at Cassidy School has won for you the membership in the Cum Laude Society. 
This is a fellowship of scholars whose purpose is to recognize excellence in academic work. As you pursue your education and career in the future, it is our hope that you will accept the responsibility to make some contribution to the ongoing search for greater understanding of humans and society. It is now time to present the inductees to the assembly. I would like to ask our head of school, Mr. Nathan Sheldon, to call the names of the new members of the Cum Laude Society. Inductees, please come forward when Mr. Sheldon reads your name and receive your Cum Laude certificate and pin from our upper division director, Dr. John Powell, who will be assisted by our Dean of Academics, Ms. Joanne Infantino. Then please stand in front facing the assembly as the other inductees come forward. I ask the assembly to please hold the applause until all the names of the inductees are called. Mr. Shelton. And that feels good. Congratulations, guys. You've done a lot and you've earned an incredible award, so we're really proud of you. As I read your name, if you would, like Mrs. Esker said, please come forward. From the senior class, inducted in the spring of 2020, Sophia Quinn Dykstra. Sarah Ann Gibson. Carlos Paul Henry. James Bowman Lowe. Matthew Diego McChristian. Kate Ellen Richardson. Spencer Victoria Steele. Inducted in the spring of 2021, Sydney Lauren Geiger. Caroline Rose Hall. Abby Suzanne Kays. Tina Quinn Wynn. And while she's not here, she's back in China, we want to recognize Li Bei Pan. Isabella Hampton Pardo. Alal Muhammad Zahur. And Conway Zhang. From the junior class, Divya Kelly Chandra Sakaran. Abigail Loris Owens Fakuri. Allison Elizabeth Jones. Kuna Lee. Fisher Douglas Moody. Aria Devi Nanda. Shanta Olivia Rondas. Jax Jack Edsel Stanfield.
Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the 2021 inductees to the Cum Laude Society of the Cassidy School Chapter. Congratulations. guys have a seat congratulations it is now my honor to get to introduce this year's cum laude speaker captain caitlin anderson as mrs essiger said captain anderson graduated from Casty school in 2011 while at Cassidy, she participated in many activities and is especially fond of her memories, fond of her memories rather, in the swim team, on the or in the orchestra, and Mrs. Essiger, her Blue Crystal Project. <laughs> Captain Anderson is the first woman to graduate from Cassidy and attend a U.S. service academy. In the summer after her high school graduation, she started cadet basic training, also known as Beast Barracks. At the, universe, at the United States Military Academy at West Point in New York. During her cadet time, she was active on the Cadet Orchestra, Officers Christian Fellowship, and the West Point Equestrian Team. She also interned at the U.S. Capitol and the Pentagon, and at the Pentagon. She represented the United States at a NATO cadet conference in the Netherlands and served as an adjunct for the Honorable Condoleezza Rice's Thayer Award Parade. By her senior year at West Point, she was promoted to brigade, to brigade staff as a key academic year leader, attaining the highest echelon of leadership at the academy. Upon graduating from West Point, Captain Anderson com was commissioned as a second lieutenant and trained as a military intelligence officer. In her first assignment, she was charged as an assistant intelligence officer in the cavalry squadron at Fort Lewis, Washington, where she was the only female officer in a combat arms unit. Caitlin was then selected to be a platoon leader and then a company executive officer for the brigade's military intelligence company. Upon promotion to captain, Ms. Anderson served as the battalion intelligence officer for the field artillery unit. In 2019, Captain Anderson was honored to be one of only 20 officers across the Army selected to participate in the funded legal education program. As an active duty Army officer, she attends the University of Oklahoma is in, and is in her second year as a law student. Upon completion of her Juris Doctorate, she will go to her next assignment and continue her service in the Army JAG as an Army JAG officer. Will you please help me in welcoming to the, to the podium our 2021 Cum Laude speaker, Captain Caitlin Anderson. Hello, I'm honored to be your speaker today and having been in your shoes not so very long ago, I hope I can pass some advice that helped me navigate through my senior year of high school and the next chapter that awaits. First and foremost, congratulations to all of the cum laude inductees. It takes incredible discipline and commitment to earn this recognition. You have set yourselves apart as academic leaders within this school. I hope you take that same sense of seriousness and determination into all other areas of your life. I assure you, after your senior year here, your freshman year academics in college will not be overwhelming. You will have the advantage of having been educated in Oklahoma's best college preparatory school. Go confidently ahead knowing you are prepared for what the world has to offer. Be leaders in this new world. As a leader, I encourage you to hone in on your moral compass. Seek the wisdom and advice of mentors, even if that's just a quick email asking someone to meet for lunch or coffee, and take time to invest in yourself and others. The most valuable resource you have is time. By investing in that time and a resource that valuable, you will set yourself apart from the average Joe. 
And while you're in this role, the best leaders are the ones who are themselves. Just be yourself. This is key to leadership because it offers the world the most genuine and sincere version of yourself. Live your life with purpose and mission. I found that this was uniquely captured in Proverbs 4.23, which says, do not withhold good from those who deserve it when it is in your power to act. When you find yourself uniquely positioned in a leadership role to help someone take charge, I hope you rise to the occasion and realize that not everyone can do what you can do. With your foundation firmly set, I offer these words of advice to build upon your base. First, I highly recommend you explore all of your options and opportunities. That being said, I will give you an example of when I did not do this. During the summers at West Point, cadets participate in a few weeks of field training. I was in my third summer and was in the middle of the rite of passage known as cadet leadership detail training. My fellow cadets and I took turns in different leadership roles and practiced planning and executing different missions such as raids, assaults, and patrols. One afternoon, we had just finished one mission and had to march to the next location to get our next assignment. The route, unknown to me at the time, was going to take us up the tallest and steepest mountain in the West Point Training Reservation, fondly known by cadets as Bull Hill. We start off, I'm keeping up, but very tired. We're all focused and we've only been getting about two hours of sleep a night and that was usually scattered in 30 minute increments here and there. So here we are, trekking up the mountain with our heavy sacks on our back and we lean forward to counter the weight up to keep our momentum going uphill. These old style rec sacks are built for broad shouldered infantrymen. So the frame and the straps are wider than my shoulders. I have to pull the, the straps cinched as tight as they can go and the chest strap is pulled extra tight to try to keep it on my shoulders. But then I start realizing that my stride is only about half of what it was and my lungs are burning and I can feel my muscles practically going numb with effort as I'm straining to get up this mountain. I had started at the front of the line and by the time we made it to the top, I was still with my platoon, but very much towards the back of the formation now. A couple of my friends hang back and encourage me up the mountain, and I keep staring dead ahead to get to the top of this mountain. A little embarrassed at being so slow to get up the hill, I apologize to some of my squad mates and thank them for staying with me. One guy goes, are you kidding? That was so impressive. You just got up that hill instead of saying, forget this, I'm getting in the Humvee. Too out of breath to really answer, but in my head I'm thinking, that was an option? <laughs> then I realize there's a two-door Humvee that has been slowly following us up the hill the entire time. The moral of that story is keep your eyes open for all of the options around you. <laughs> Opportunities are not lengthy visitors, so don't be afraid to take advantage of them and explore them. Don't be afraid to march off the map, so to speak. When I gave my, sen my senior speech here in chapel, that was the best way that I could characterize getting out of my comfort zone and looking into other opportunities. Your map is everything in your life, the familiarity of your routine, your experiences, and your family's guidance. Everything beyond that is unknown, college, jobs, careers, etc. Those are all blank spots on your map right now. They are outside your comfort zone and don't really have any shape or definition. Don't be afraid to march beyond the familiar and explore the unknown. March off the map. I was not supposed to go into the army. The military was the last thing on my mind and I'm sure many of my teachers here today could probably say that that seemed very um, maybe out of character or a bit of a surprise and a curveball when I told them, came to school saying I'm looking at West Point. Anyway, I knew that I wanted to go to a good school and I really felt like I wanted to explore the East Coast. I worked tirelessly, focused almost exclusively on my academics to make sure I could get into an Ivy League school. That was what I wanted and that was what was supposed to be the fit for me or so I thought. My junior year of high school, I received an invitation in the mail for a West Point College admissions meeting. 
Truth be told, I really only knew of West Point within the context of the Revolutionary War and Benedict Arnold. I didn't pay much attention to it until a couple of days later when I saw that Forbes had released their college rankings and West Point was number one just above Harvard, Yale, and Stanford that year. Those were the names that I thought I was looking for in a school, but this article really made me pay attention and I attended the West Point admissions meeting. It was an entirely new world I knew very little about, but I was so impressed with the cadets I met. And then one of the admissions liaisons told me, you are exactly what West Point is looking for. You could do this. I wasn't entirely sure, but I was intrigued. Intrigued enough to apply for the summer camp to visit West Point. From there, everything fell into place. God had opened a door and I walked through it, and then another door and another door opened, and I kept walking through them to see what the next opportunity was. Even though I had never thought of myself as an army girl, I decided to try. Mr. Pena told me that he had seen me running in track and thought I should try long distance and cross country to prep for West Point. So even though I had never been a runner nor thought of myself as such, I joined cross country my senior year and continued with my West Point application. By October of my senior year, I had an offer contingent on completing the physical test portion. As soon as the cross country season ended, I spent every afternoon in the gym with Coach Saga. God bless that man. <laughs> when I first looked at going to West Point, I could only do one push-up. By the time I applied after training with Zaga, I was able to hit the average score or better on all that was required for those physical events. It wasn't the option that I had in my own preconceived notions for myself, but it was a unique opportunity. And ultimately, I knew I was always going to wonder what if, if I didn't try. This leads me to my second point. Always have three plans, three different options that you could do that would make you happy. They don't have to be entire lifetime plans. They can be six month, one year, or five year plans. For example, when I was a first lieutenant, I was going to be deciding if I was going to stay in the army beyond my initial commitment after West Point or go ahead and get out. If I did, I didn't know what that would look like, but my three plans were one, stay the course as a military intelligence officer and go to captain's career course and stay in the army for another year and a half. Two, get out of the army at my five year mark and pursue law school as a civilian. Or three, apply to the army's law school program and stay in the army for the meantime. Your three plans don't have to be particularly similar or extremely different from each other. They may just be a variation on a theme. Of course, you may have your heart set on one dream, and I encourage you to put your all into pursuing that dream. The thing with life is, very often you will find things don't go according to plan, and God may close a door on what you thought you were meant to do. Don't be discouraged. If you've already thought through three plans for yourself, you are already in a flexible mindset to rebound, regroup, and pursue a new dream. For me, I found that working towards one dream set me up with qualifications to pursue later opportunities I'd never even considered or knew about previously. Don't be afraid to let go of plan number one and pursue something else entirely. It's okay to find a new dream. My third piece of advice, and let me just preface this, this was sage wisdom bestowed on a thousand cadets my senior year at West Point by a visiting commanding general. I believe it was General McFarland, if I remember correctly. He said, if you remember nothing else I say here today, remember this, use the bathroom every chance you get. <laughs> you have no idea when you are going to get caught in an emergency or an important situation, and you don't want to get hit with an emergency bathroom run when you could have gone earlier. This may have been some of the most practical real world advice I ever got. <laughs> and I'll admit it has served me well. In summary, remember to explore your options, be flexible and ambitious in your plans and take advantage of the time and opportunities you have. Good luck to all of you and I wish you the very best. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much, Captain Anderson.
Congratulations once again to our inductees. Thank you to all of you for joining us in this celebration. After the benediction, I would like to ask the inductees to remain in chapel for photos. After the photos, you can exit with your parents to the east door for a bag and some treats. There being no more business before the chapter, this meeting is adjourned after the benediction of Father Sh Tim Shan Humans. Thank you, Mrs. Esker. Would you please stand? And hear this good word. You have been blessed to bless. And so may God give you the grace to never sell yourself short, the faith and the fortitude to risk something big for something good. Because the world is too dangerous for anything but truth, and it's too small for anything but love. So may God take your minds and think through them. May God take your lips and speak through them. And may God take your hearts and set them on fire. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.